Good morning, honorable judges. We are Team HKU. Maybe let's start with a question. Do you know how far is it to travel from China to Indonesia? It's around 3,000 miles. With our expansion strategy and new product, we can make the 3,000 miles to profit within one year. I'm Isabel. Today with Annie, Kelly, and Esther, we're going to propose solutions for FinSolution to optimize its sales and enhance its operational efficiency when exploring new geographical segments and expanding new business offerings. With P2P regulation restrictions in China, a huge market has been lost. Therefore, we propose to expand to Southeast Asia's largest economy, Indonesia, integrating our loan products for foreign workers and introducing crowdfunding to help businesses to develop with the assistance of AI recommendation systems. After all, we forecast the two projects to result in a break even in less than one year. We believe that technology makes finance better and we think it's the power is way stronger than we can imagine. Finvolution is the leading P2P company in China with over 10 million users targeting SMEs and young entrepreneurs. Different stakeholders have been facing bottlenecks with the tightened policy, which limits financial choices of borrowers and decreases earnings of shareholders from the exit of the China market. The company's business model has shifted and the decrease in growth weight rate and the need for loans means that lenders now look for a more diversified profile. Finvolution has its own developed technology using machine learning and NLP, which provides low cost and convenient service, and it can go further when these are used in our expanded product segment. So how might we, Finvolution, outperform local and international rivalries in the fintech market by expansion and the leveraging of AI? Southeast Asia countries have been growing fast in fintech and we propose to expand in Indonesia. Despite there are already around 300 fintech companies in Indonesia, there is still ample potential when 60% of the labor force who work in small or medium-sized enterprises cannot get funding from the bank as they are working in informal sectors, which our new products will also cater to this population. In fact, the bank's loan product does not fit many of the SM and MSME operational model. For example, their payment conditions, the form of mortgage and credit rating. Our expansion can introduce a new world of finance to over 100 million adults who lack banking service, when capturing their lending behaviors in consumptive things as the community has no habit to save. The table has also shown other alternatives in deciding to expand geographically. The market potential and government policy has been weighted heavier. We particularly looked into the Asia Small and Medium Sized Enterprise Monitor published by the Asian Development Bank, where SME loan growth in 2020 of these companies has reached 7.6% for Indonesia, while other lies between 0.6% to 1.9%. The licensing issue has to be tackled in other countries. Additional licenses are required in Singapore and the developing regulations in Vietnam may imply that a change in policy will lead to drastic change in our business operation. Registered subsidiary in Indonesia has started its local operations and gained much attention from the community. And we think that the exposure would be a stepping stone in building the local market. Our plan would be to have the Philippines as our next expansion, where we have also acquired a subsidiary there and anticipating the 1.9% loan growth to further increase. So Kelly, where should we start our market expansion? Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Isabel. We are currently devising plan to expand Finfology to Southeast Asia. Amongst the country, we believe that Indonesia is the location with the most potential for expansion. For the next five years, we aim to set up office in Jakarta and Surabaya. Both Jakarta and Surabaya accounts for the highest GDP in Indonesia, which in turn would mean a wider adoption of telephone networks. 
Firstly, we'll dive deep into the current market landscape and the major competitors in Indonesia. There are an array of competitors in Indonesia. Amongst the others, there are both domestic and also well-known international fintech lead lending companies. As seen from the graph, we estimate that Finvolution would sit around the bottom left of the graph at the start of the Indonesia business. And we hope that in the near future, we can be, it can be elevated to the upper right corner of the graph. As of now, the most prominent and diverse company is Akulaku, with companies like Creduva and Investry closing follow. We believe that Finvolution can attain a high prominence in Indonesia by targeting overseas Chinese merchants and domestic helpers. We hope to enter into the Indonesian market through company subsidiary through overseas operation. We believe that the most cost effective method is by establishing a new branch. The downside to opening a new branch would be the lengthy time needed. Although our initial planning is around five years, which ensure able time for setting up branch offices, it would not be suitable for joint ventures and acquisition purposes due to its cost ineffectiveness. Moreover, we plan to recruit local talents in Jakarta for management purposes. This is so since the local would be the best to understand the culture and the preference of the Indonesian people. Apart from expansion, we plan to introduce a new loan product to expand our user base and increase our efficiency. The new loan product include borrowing loans to Indonesian debt work abroad, mainly focusing on domestic helpers. Statistics show that the migration domestic workers have an array of ways to borrow money. For example, family, friends, employees, employers and financial institutes. However, 34% of the migration domestic worker would turn to unstructured sector. For instance, loan shark or illegal institutes. We aim to fill this lacuna and provide an accessible and legal way of money lending to these migration domestic workers. The right graph illustrates the reason why domestic workers fail to assess formal financial services. We found that it is due to three major reasons. First, the lack of financial literacy. Secondly, the lack of awareness. And third, which is the main reason, lack of documents. We believe that Finvolution can employ big data to alleviate the main issue. For instance, big data can be used to analyze the credibility of the borrower by investigating into their internet activities, rendering bank documents unnecessary. Furthermore, the traditional loan process certain issues which we believe that the new loan product can solve. Domestic worker has to pay a huge payment placement fee once they are employed. This in turn results in bank refusal to loan money to the migration domestic worker, forcing worker to resort to borrowing money from credit facilities. With the high interest rate and handling fee, most of the workers face huge hurdle in loan repayment. We believe that the loan products by Finvolution can solve this issue. I will now pass on to Annie to illustrate what Finvolution can actually do to, the, to help the migration workers. Thank you, Kelly. Now that we know Loan Shark Syndicate has long been preying on migrant workers and lending to them at exorbitant interest rates, Finvolution provides customized loan offerings to these migrant workers to meet the specific demands at much more affordable and reasonable rates. The value and desire to exercise such corporate social responsibilities are crystal clear. But you may question, with such a business model transition in Indonesia, we against our gradual shift towards better quality borrowers since the year 2018? The answer is no. The rationale is closely related to the inherent characteristic, their contracts or agreements. Migrant workers would always be issued such a contract by the employers, contractors, or even agencies in support of their visa application. With relatively secure job prospects for a predetermined period of time, their default risk would be greatly reduced. And hence, it would be definitely a win-win situation for Finvolution to target as such migrant workers who are currently underserved. Next, this is Serena, a 21-year-old, who is about to start her job as a maid in Hong Kong. Just like an overwhelming majority of her counterparts who are now in Hong Kong, she faces very high fees charged during her recruitment process, training, placement fees, etc. As a result, 
she may be forced to take loans with high interest rates to repay these costs. Before her flight to Hong Kong, Serena is very worried upon hearing some of her friends being forced, as, as Kelly have shared, borrow money from friends, licensed money lenders, and even loan shops. However, as she is struggling with how to sort out her financial situation, Serena bumps into one of Finvolution ads on Facebook, introducing her an alternative of much convenience and of lower cost. Serena, whether she is now in Hong Kong, Indonesia, or even elsewhere on her flight, would just need to submit her personal application and contract, followed by vigorous assessment by our magic mirror to assess Serena's credit rating. Serena will then be informed of the assessment result and have the loan amount be transferred to her the next business day. And as you can see, Finvolution's robust design, combined with the great customer service, makes it highly convenient for Serena's use compared to other licensed or unlicensed money lenders. And in the next slide, you'll see Serena's story is in fact not rare at all. In Indonesia alone, migrant workers account for a huge proportion of the working population, according to research by the Central Statistic Agency in 2019, with the majority being just like Serena, made of babysitter and even construction workers and factory workers. This will be highly, this will help, that this will be a highly lucrative market and burgeoning user base for Finvolutions to tap into. And next slide, on top of the old go-to market strategy in Indonesia, our team has spent the extra efforts to refuse Finvolutions existing offerings in the China market, as we have identified the potential of crowdfunding, in particular via the crowdfunding angel investor network. While its roots come from charities or artists seeking backing for their project, it has now been further expanded to, for instance, when an entrepreneur seeks seed money but decides to try via different multiple channels. And due to regulatory, regulatory changes in China, Finvolution unfortunately has no choice but to fully exit from one of its previous major pillars, P2P business. We hope to establish another new pillar for Finvolution, which is crowdfunding angel investor investment network. By establishing a diverse global community of investors across a wide range of industries, Finvolution's crowdfunding angel investment network will not only be an ideal place for SMEs, entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, and even individual creators to generate capital for their courses, but also spread the word faster as multiple investors and groups are going to be involved right from the start. What's more important, Finvolution could take full advantage of its existing technological solutions, Magic Mirror for background screening and Bright Mirror for fraud detection, as you can see from the slide. And a lot of times, angel investors you know would have to spend a great deal of their valuable time for due diligence, relying heavily on their vigilance and common sense to scrutinize such voluminous documents before they can fully concentrate on the gist, which is the viability, visibility, and desirability of the project or business in itself. Magic Mirror and Bright Mirror, although they cannot fully replace such critical steps, would definitely help lessen angel investors' heavy burden by way of lowering default rates, potential scam occurrences. And this intriguing element that we would love to and highly recommend Finvolution to develop and integrate would be the recommendation engine backed by AI called GoMatcher, designed to optimize and catalyze the such matchmaking process, taking into account search histories, clicks, and locations, for instance, of angel investors, as well as clicks, ratings, impressions of the projects in itself to increase the content relevance and accelerate the journey for angel investors to meet the apples of their eyes. Last but not least, as you can see here, under Finvolution's crowdfunding angel investment network, we shall benefit from two revenue streams. First, company fee, which is equivalent to 3.5% of the fund raised, and second, slotting fee, which is a standard HKD $150. And by, care, by comparing side by side with our current mainstream crowdfunding platforms, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, Finvolution would very reasonably establish the competitive advantage. As for the implementation and financials, I'll now pass on to my colleague, Esther. Thanks, Annie. So it's time to officialize our strategies in a five-year time frame. For our expansion strategies, we will first reveal our operating models where new customized loan products for foreign workers will be launched. Afterwards, 
In depth market and competitor analysis will be done where pricing will be adjusted to a suitable level in Indonesia. Recruiting local talents, setting up office will be done in the pre-launch phase. Constant monitoring and e evaluations will be done to look for potential markets in other regions in Indonesia and neighboring APEC countries. With research and monitoring, FIM solutions will enter Surabaya in year four. For the launch of crowdfunding business line, functionalities features will be planned and wireframe will be designed in the pre-launch phase. Analysis will be done on global and regional rivalries, such as Indiegogo and JD crowdfunding, where better firms positioning can be done. After doing forward A-B testing on the recommendation engine, crowdfunding will be launched in the market, which does not only target the locals, but also the global investors. In order to build brand awareness in an entire new market, a holistic marketing campaigns will be carried out. In general, Film Solutions will launch both online and offline promotions, such as public relations and networking events. For instance, it will join the Indonesia FinTech Summit to showcase the upcoming FinTech loan products and crowdfunding platforms. Since positive word of mouth is essential for FinTech migrant workers' communities, referral program will be launched especially for these products. If a migrant workers, let's say Serena's, introduce Fin Solution loan products to her friends, who eventually apply for the loans. Monetary incentive, which is a lower principal repayment rate, will be charged on Serena's. If Serena's has already repaid all her loans, this referral record will be stored in her account, where she could convert it into money for every 10th referral and use it in her P2P service. Since mass phone penetration is high and KOL marketing is found to be particularly effective in China, digital marketing is in the core in China market. For example, we will launch advertisements on the popular social media, such as Weibo and WeChat. Also, we will collaborate with KOLs. And this because cause community management is easy to be formed between KOLs, customers, as well as the brand itself, as Chinese customers rely and trust heavily on KOL marketing and online reviews. We will also do better content marketing to boost SEO. Free for Z theme solutions may face three key challenges. One of the key challenge is that there may be low usage in the Indonesian market. This challenge is deemed to be short-lived as we have already launched different marketing campaigns, such as utilizing SEO to increase exposures. In addition, Film Solutions utilizes its distinctive magic mirrors and bright mirror for background checks and fraud detections. With these features, the project list on the crowdfunding platform is deemed to be of high quality, less fraud, and higher return. Based on these characteristics of the project, Alice believes that the crowdfunding platforms can attract a lot of angels investors. What's more, the new known product is customized for the migrant workers in Indonesia, which match with all their needs. Based on the mitigating measures, the risk of low usage in Indonesian market could be overcome. So now, you may wonder if our strategies is a worthy investment. With our crowdfunding strategies, Fin Solutions can achieve the break even point within a year, and it has 1.05 times of RIs and positive NPV. Therefore, we can conclude that the projected earnings generated by these strategies exceed the anticipated costs. And hence, Fin Solutions should definitely invest in this project. Next, based on the key assumptions on the left, Fin Solutions will obtain a 1.2 times increase in profit under these crowdfunding strategies. Next, with our expansion strategies, Fin Solutions can achieve the break even point within a year as well, and it has 0.63 times of ROI. Therefore, Fin Solutions should also invest in these expansions. Based on the pricing strategies for the new known products, as well as other assumptions on the left, Fin Solutions will obtain a 2.56 times increase in profit under these expansion strategies. We are determined to help Fin Solutions tap into the Indian market by launching customized loan products and leveraging AI to launch our groundbreaking crowdfunding platform. We are eager to make Fin Solutions located in every mile in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, you might not start the Q&A session. Hi, hi everyone. 
uh, maybe if it's okay with uh, the other judges, I just want to first uh, start off. Uh, thanks, uh, Annie, Esther, Isabel, and Kelly. It was a fantastically detailed, and you did cover a lot of ground in here. Let me just uh, perhaps uh, ask what are the alternatives that we explored before you zoomed in on this particular recommendation that you have had? Have you looked at what are the other options that the company may have had? And why did you choose this particular one? That's my first question. Over to you, HKU. Um, could I uh, clarify, do you mean the expansion or the loan product? So let's take any one of them. Uh, let's take, for example, the loan products particularly. Why did you pick that particular solution or what are the alternatives you've explored? Maybe Kelly, you can go to our slides first. Thank you for the question. So maybe I can take these questions. So for the loan products, our solution now is to have a new loan products for the migrant workers. So the reason why we suggest uh, uh, we should launch a new loan product for the migrant workers is mainly because we see a huge demand there and they will need to pay a huge placement fee. Actually, during our discussions, we have also explored other alternatives such as student loans. However, we believe that um, these student loans may not be very um, effective or may not really target the Indonesian market. So we believe that this student loans can actually target no matter in China or Indonesia or Philippines, where film solutions will enter later. So in particular for the Indonesian market, we um, at last choose to uh, launch the new um, migration workers loan. Yes. Do you guys have any points to add on? Yep, definitely. Thank you, Esther. Uh, on top of the consideration mentioned by my teammate, Specifically on university students, for instance, as we all know, students who are gradual, who are usually in college or university institution would sometimes be subsidized or offered grants by the government. At the same time, there's also a, a, a significant likelihood that they would obtain scholarship from the institution in itself. However, as we can see, migrant workers here are particularly underserved and we can also experience and anticipate their plight, according to so many statistics that we have cited, their plight created by uh, demands, death threats from loan sharks created both to themselves and the family. So we picture that uh, helping migrant workers in a sense would also build on extra goodwill for FinFolution uh, to further tie back to the burgeoning trend of corporate social responsibility, uh, heavily reliant by uh, companies for example, now listed on NYSE as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a very good answer. Let me just lead on from there. Uh, since you picked up on and did consider some other alternatives from uh, to choose from and then picked up on the domestic workers, uh, but isn't then restricting the target market? How big do you think this particular size of the market is? And therefore, if I relate this to the PL question that you had, how big the dollar value of the size of the price would be for Finvolution? Why is it worth the effort if it's only a domestic uh, you know, workers? Um, thank you for your question. Um, as mentioned by Esther and Annie, we think that domestic helper is a large market um, because especially in Hong Kong or Singapore, many of the families might hire a domestic worker to help with their house chores. Um, we, also, um, we also understand that uh, the money we can earn from domestic worker might not be high, but uh, we foresee that this is only one of our business branch. And so um, also, as mentioned, uh, we think corporate social responsibility is very important. And so we believe that helping those domestic worker will also be um, a good thing that FinVolution can do. So thanks, um, Kelly, on addressing the first question. Questions. So now we'll address um, the financials questions. So uh, we have assumed, um, so um, after looking at the statistics, we have noticed that um, there are 27,000 migrant workers migrating um, out of Indonesia every year. And we assume that um, um, actually 48% of this 
like migrant workers will use our platforms. So this is only uh, this 46% actually applies for the first year. And after the first year, we assume that there will be 3% increments each year based on the positive word of mouth. And we also assume that um, each migrant workers will need to borrow um, $5,000 uh, for the placement fee. So uh, with this kind of calculations and also our 4% um, long, um, our 4% interest rate, we assume that we have uh, the following uh, numbers that we have shown um, on appendix um, two. So you can make reference to the second column where um, it's mentioned interest earned from customized loans for foreign workers. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Let me pass it back to the other judges now, thank you. Hi. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Goodbye. Thanks. Uh, can I ask a question of, um, you mentioned um, about one, I think it's one year break even. Uh, is that one year? Um, how, can you expand a little bit on how do you think that can be done? Because that to me sounds quite ambitious. Okay, Thank so, you. yeah. Okay, so for this graph, this um, strategy is actually is, is for the crowdfunding um, platform. So we assume that, um, so we assume that uh, we will charge one hundred and fifty dollars per slotting fee, and we will charge five point uh, three point five percent of the company fee. And how we can come up with this kind of numbers on the revenue is that we assume that we will have um, 769 projects every year. So for this kind of numbers, we actually uh, make reference to our competitors such as Indiegogo and also other competitors. And we um, assume that we will only have 15% um, of the total um, projects list on the website. Um, each year, and that's why we have calculated um, 769 projects every year. And for the revenues, we also assume that we will only um, um, account for 30% um, of Indiegogo revenues because uh, we are just a new business line, and also we don't have a lot of brand recognitions. But then this revenues will increase um, three to five percent um, each year after the first year. And actually, we also assume that um, the expense um, for this crowdfunding will not be a huge, um, a huge sum. It is because we also utilize some of our previous um, technologies, such as the Bright Mira and also the other technologies, which is used for the background screening and also the fraud detection. So actually, we utilize back the previous technologies. And the only technologies that we need to develop ourselves um, is the recommendations engines. And we assume that um, this recommendations engine will actually take uh, use up. Uh, 300,000 and this 300,000 will only be uh, used in year one, which is um, which is included in the R&D um, expenses. And um, from this uh, kind of um, income and also revenue, uh, revenue and also expense, expenses um, statement, you can see that we can achieve our um, break even with a year after doing the DCF models. So you can make reference to the appendix ones for the details. Um, revenue and expenditures uh, statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, team. Uh, very nice presentation. Um, I would like to have one question around the, um, and to see your thought on, on about the um, integrated risk on regulatory side. So basically, uh, the reason why uh, innovation is looking at towards the Southeast Asia is because of the China exit. So uh, because of the China regulation is growing rapidly. So um, the, the firm is now looking at the Southeast, South, Southeast Asia area, area, right? So is there any additional thought that you will be managing this kind of risk across the, the region? Because Southeast Asia is not only a country, it's a portfolio of multiple countries like Indonesia and Philippines. Thank you for the question. We can see Philippines, um, the regulatory or the government policy has been um, uh, pretty loose, but why do we uh, consider uh, consider Indonesia first uh, for expansion? It's because uh, of its uh, loan growth. So um, actually from our research, Philippines also has regulate uh, P2P, uh, the P2P business model, but at the same time, 
uh, we also have a subsidiary there. So we believe that we have uh, the expertise and we have the knowledge to handle the regulatory uh, policy and rec uh, regulations. And as in the risk mitigation, as Esther has mentioned, we are also we also acknowledge uh, know about the risks that we are going to foresee about uh, data privacy or any uh, data management uh, risk. But therefore, therefore, uh, and also regulatory risk. Therefore, we consider Indonesia first and Philippines first before other country like Vietnam. They haven't has like a strict or they haven't had one uh, part, like the bill hasn't passed for regulating P2P systems. So we try to limit, uh, try to reduce our uh, change, drastic change in system first. So we consider the two uh, countries. Yeah, let me ask, ask one follow-up question on that, right? So so once, if there is a proposed bill on some of the regulations area, some regulated areas, what is the approach to manage that? Is it a exit strategy? Is it a migration from one country to another country? We believe um, when we start to scale up our business in Indonesia and Philippines, we uh, we, we should already have some market research and also explore into the uh, the uh, Southeast Asia market. Okay. Uh, therefore, I believe that our, like when the bills or when the regulations are uh, passed, we'll already have some uh, foresight about the, uh, the change and we'll have a team there, as we mentioned, a branch there will have a, a suitable adjustment in our operations. Okay, great answer, thank you. Hi, maybe just a follow from my again. Uh, what are the learnings that FinVolution should pick up from the China experience to be able to fine tune the strategy for Indonesia? That's one part. The second part is maybe just leading on to what Max was alluding to. You have one strategy, but many of the strategies obviously have a probability of success or a failure. What's a plan B or what's a plan C? So two part question, what's a learning from China you want to incorporate into the strategy? B, second part is that, what's a plan B, C or D for that matter? <laughs> Perhaps I can try to tackle the first part of the question first, which is what is the greatest learning from our uh, exposure in China into our third expansion into um, Indonesia, Philippines, and so on and so forth. Definitely, as you can tell from China's rapid growth, uh, growing from a relatively um, developing primitive rural-based society into right now with a lot of technical innovation, for example, Zhongguanchuan in China as a, as a technology hub as China's Silicon Valley. But you can also tell from government's reactions to us gradually, uh, I would say, fine tuning or improving the regulatory um, regime uh, due to different pitfalls as they can visualize from uh, the corporate practice. And we also foresee in other developing countries in the Southeast Asian part of uh, Asia Pacific area, uh, as the country gradually maturing into a more um, formalized, structurized economy. They will also fine tune their regulatory changes from time to time. That's why learning number one would be, uh, we should definitely join more of these um, association society as, as suggested by our teammate engaging in summit and also conferences, because from time to time throughout the government's legislative, legislative process, they would definitely uh, engage in different stakeholders in, in the industry for consultation. That is why it's important for FinVolution to not only focus on business development, liaison with business partners, such as different banks, uh, for example, Haixia, but we also uh, get involved in government and non-governmental cooperation so that we will constantly be involved in the regulatory changes and drafting process. And in case the legislator side have certain cons concern that they think uh, they must put a strict um, regulatory approach, for example, entirely banning 
P2P service, we can try to uh, alleviate such concern um, in the drafting stage rather than in the final stage where we'll only uh, be, be faced with strict regulations put on ourselves. So this is learning number one. And second- Can I, can I, can I just, sorry, pause you on that, my I, apologies. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I do need to uh, interrupt. We run out of time. Uh, so thank you very much, the team. Thank you very much, the judges. Thanks, Carolina. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Very good. Thanks, everyone. Presentation.